uh, probably uh, a quick uh, uh, a blogging or uh, I would say chatting. Uh, type your responses in the chat box uh, or our this one. Okay, what do you understand by student, uh, sorry, servant leadership? Okay, how do you define servant leadership? Just put in a couple of words. Okay, you don't need to give a, a full text description. According to you, uh, servant leadership means what? Okay, so can you quickly respond? I've seen already uh, Lakshmi. Okay, out and out democratic leadership. It's the first question. I'd like to read it out so that it benefits you all. Okay, Ramana says uh, it is focused and collaborative. Okay, others, uh, please put it. There is nothing right, nothing wrong. So the leadership is something at the end of the day, it is your style. All right, more responses are coming up. Uh, our Ramakrishna says leading without being authoritative. Very good. Vani says to be serving the employees to empower and enable them to be their best. Okay. So Ramana refines it uh, with one more version. Participative by all those who follow. Uh, I would like to hear more responses. Everyone can participate, including Provence's audience. There is no competition, so you can also participate. We have at least uh, 14 to 15 people. So I got only four or five responses. Because uh, most of you are PMPs, you heard about it. And you might be practicing well also in many ways. Okay, uh, Narendran says, uh, being a team player while also leading a team. Uh, that's good, very interesting dimension. I would like to hear more, Praveen, Aditya, Imran, Jeevan Kumar. Okay, the servant leader is the one who knows the difference between authority and power and strive to earn authority. Very good. Sambas. Sivarao, I haven't heard from you. Shyam also not yet responded. Okay, I'll give uh, probably another one minute. Try putting it, no? So this is uh, our webinar. Everyone can participate. Okay, uh, let me, yeah, I have not received much responses. I don't know why. Okay, good, Samba Sirva has expanded. Understand the team requirements and provide required support to get the work done. Very good. Making teams self-reliant, like a scrum master in Agile. Very good. Okay. 
Uh, let me try picking up the keywords. Uh, the servant leader is the one who practice democracy. He is collaborative. He, he leads without authority or without the need of authority. And then he brings uh, the best from the employees. He serves the employees. He allows participation by all. He's a team player. And uh, he understands the value of power and authority. Okay. And he strives to earn it rather than spend it. Okay. He understands the team requirements and support them. Get, okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. So the, the, one of the purpose of this uh, webinar is to bring these pearls together. Okay, so you have made my job uh, much simpler and uh, whatever you have put in is the one I'm going to uh, share it with you. Okay, so I guess at least I would say 40 to 60 percent of what I have uh, put in the Sir, we lost your voice. So I think his uh, device got struck or something. He'll come back. He'll join back. Please bear with us for a couple of minutes, please. Uh, Prashant, I have a question. This is Lakshmi. Uh, so how do we get the PDUs for these? You have to submit the feedback after the session, ma'am. I did that for the last webinar and I'll do it today also. And yeah, we will, we will, we, you, will, you will receive a link in that email what you give in your feedback form. Oh, I didn't receive any, but yeah, I will check. Yeah, we'll 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 check that once uh, once again for you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Hey, Prashant, Ramna here. Hello. Hi, sir. How are you? Yeah, good. Uh, see, we are latest. We have seen the trend of auto creating the PDUs. Is it possible from your side to do that? We share your PMI ID, sir. We'll do that. <laughs> okay. We can also do it, but uh, the trend is uh, catching up like auto create of the PDUs. Correct, correct, correct. You share your PMI ID, we'll, we'll submit it. We just leave it sure. in the chat. Sure, sure. No, no. I can do it by myself, but I'm asking, is there any practice to be adopted by preventures or is it selective? No, it is not about that. It is there from the beginning. Generally. Hello. 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 Yes, sir. Now, now we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Prashant, I'm, I'm audible. Yes, sir. You, we can hear you, but uh, uh, your your video got struck in an older one. I mean, you have to turn on your video on this device. Prashant? Can you hear me? Hello? Shivani? Yes, sir. Shivani? I can hear, sir. Sir, we can hear your voice, uh -huh. sir. Yes, sir, I can hear you, but uh, we're not unable to see your screen. You are not able to hear us. Yeah, we are able to hear you. Okay. Okay. I don't know what could be the reason. So 
sir, uh, maybe you can rejoin again, sir. Okay. Hello? Yes, sir. What happened? We can hear your voice, sir. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And uh, I think uh, my iPad uh, had this. Okay, let me close it. Let me share it from me. Just give me a moment. Uh, are you able to see the screen now? Now, now yes. we can. Yes. We can see, sir. Okay. I don't know what happened. Uh, anyway, these gadgets, no? I think I'll never achieve maximum from this. Okay. Okay, you're in which screen now? Anyone? Can you please? Uh... What does a leader do for the people? Okay, okay. I was trying to explain this, but without a slide, I think that is when uh, uh, my internet got disturbed. Okay, I was trying to explain uh, the role of leadership and management, uh, how they interface uh, each other. Uh, let's move on. Uh, we all learned uh, uh, quite well that leadership is situational. Okay, so the situation basically depends on three key factors. One is uh, the leader and the followers and the context. Okay, so these are the three things. Uh, so the leader should know what kind of people he leads and then what is the situation uh, challenge that he's facing and then how he can synergize between himself, the followers, and the situation. So there are multiple situational leaderships uh, that we have come across. Okay, I'll just uh, take this as the uh, foundational because hundreds of models, everyone suggests their own model. So this is something which gives uh, a simple understanding. Uh, so basically, x-axis you can put it in the form of a task mode or deliverable or deadline or uh, if you go a little further a mission mode with a purpose goal etc and the y-axis is how do we accomplish that mission with the help of people and stakeholders okay yeah very simple okay how do you do that and then there are four forms evolves, autocratic, uh, democratic, uh, transformational. And uh, the fourth one is uh, something like uh, least of both, which is Lysis Fair. Okay, so we, we had a lot of discussions and you all studied well for your PMP exam and other things. Okay, the merits and other things of both. Uh, I'm not going to explain all of them. We'll try to focus on uh, the servant leadership uh, okay, around the transformational and uh, democratic. Okay, so that's an area we will try to look uh, for the next 30-35 uh, minutes. So I have uh, just presented, this is one thing we heard long back, I thought it is good to share. Okay. Uh, the servant leadership and the other form of leadership can be broadly compared in this one. Okay, they are uh, self-serving, driven to lead, maybe because of the experience, maybe because of uh, uh, the charisma or many factors because of which they are driven to lead. And by nature, it comes through a, a kind of monitor control direct focus. 
so they are given authority to give orders get the work done etc and they are they feel so basically naturally very proud of uh, earning that leadership position with uh, education experience uh, and many many very legitimate factors but uh, when it comes to servant leaders you will see a 180 degree contrast wherein okay they feel that uh, uh, it's one of the best way to serve others okay being a, a leader and uh, they consider it as a, a calling okay calling their purpose of life is to serve and the best way to serve is to lead and uh, that's how they do that and you can see even in provinces uh, our tagline is we are called to serve okay and uh, they see that the leadership as a role okay where uh, it's the best way to okay work as a perfect steward and they can partner uh, with the people whom they are serving and uh, as needed they are willing to kind of a give away their roles help others to move up and then willing to step down and still active in their okay work in building uh, organizations building people etc so they bring okay people first uh, servants first uh, before themselves now what makes them to take that kind of uh, a big shift okay so what are those for example if you look at uh, a 20 story 40 story building uh, the strength the stability rely on its foundation okay the piling foundation uh, which is unseen okay what we see is only the beauty of the tower beauty of the building but what is unseen is the foundation and the work that went into that so what are those uh, okay foundational concepts that tie together and make them to be a servant leaders so that is the the focus today and uh, uh, let's go and look at that uh, as uh, seven or eight steps uh, i have put in the uh, eight t's okay now this is one way easy to remember easy to connect okay so now if we start doing a research probably you can bring maybe another 20 t's together okay so due to limitation of time and other things so uh, uh, let's look at seven or eight of them okay so you can connect it with uh, the what are those attributes that ties together okay as a, in the foundation you will see some of the beams are tied together with the pillars okay that come from the deep pile okay climbing up to become a superstructure so what are those uh, eight uh, t's that ties together to make a person servant leader okay we are going to look at it and uh, uh, in each of these uh, t's uh, we will try to identify some example uh, in case uh, uh, you have something uh, nice to share i want you to bring an example into it okay so let me see how many of you are able to bring an example uh, from your own personal experience professional experience or okay whatever you have please try to contribute and then uh, make it as a, a, a collective learning for all of us now not the uh, many of these things are not well actually documented and uh, shared in a public domain okay you will see some of these concepts are very very contrast in nature and uh, uh, which will be a good learning for all of us so let's go to the first one i gen i most of the time, most of these attributes i just limited to either one slide or two slides okay uh, because of the time limitation and uh, uh, this virtual nature if it is a physical we can do lot of debate and other things okay so let's go and 
discuss one by one. And the first one is the accessibility. Okay, the T is the last uh, two letters, T-Y, that ties together to form a person called servant leader. So what is accessibility? Uh, the easier way to understand is availability. So a servant leader is the one, okay, who makes himself uh, available to all. Okay, now how does he makes it available to all? We, I just put a metaphor uh, from the book, what I read and then I brought it here. So if you go to any big park or other establishments, so you will find a small uh, board saying that do not walk on the grass, do not pluck the uh, flowers like that. Okay, because they take care of so much and uh, you, they want you to follow the road. But the servant leaders go differently. Okay, I am available to you at any point of time. Okay, you can walk into my cabin, no matter who you are. Okay, and they like to go around the people on trenches. Okay, the trenches means people who are, okay, working on, let's say even uh, in terms of the sanitary and any level, they don't mind. Okay, they just go, shake hands, uh, pat on the back, yeah. appreciate, uh, ask about the family, how they are doing. Okay, so that is their attitude. Okay, accessibility to everyone. Okay, so probably as a practical example, I can I can quote my own boss, Mr. A.V. Rama, when I worked for Ban. He used to say, my cabin will never be locked unless there is an exclusive one-on-one -on -one discussion in the interest of the other person, I ask the people to lock the door. Or, okay, anyone can come in anytime. And he will tell his direct reports very, very uh, categorically. Okay, there is no protocol here. Okay, if you try to scold them for bypassing and coming to the VP directly, I will take you for a task. Okay, that's how okay, he used to do. And uh, he has been regarded as a great people leader, not just within the company. And today in Hyderabad, many of the people in project management circle know by name Mr. A.V. Rama. Okay. Now I quoted, a, again, a beautiful example here uh, from Jesus Christ. Why he has been considered as a great leader after 2000 years, it is because of this very attribute uh, accessibility and availability. Okay, he met people in thousands. He met people in hundreds. He met people in tens. He met people alone. Okay, he underwent many days of journey, drifting away from his, uh, those, those days practice, went and sought after one lady, okay, who is considered as a socially outcast. And then he met with her, Talk to her one on one, transformed her life. Okay. So, one of the great attributes of servant leader is availability to all, no matter who that person is. Now, if you look at it in today's context, it is possible. Is it feasible? Okay. That could be your question. As we grow up in ladder, I have to manage hundreds, thousands. 10,000 of people, how is it possible? Okay. Now, there is no framework for it. Okay. There, definitely, there will be practical issues in terms of time, in terms of interruptions. You will win a deep discussion. Suddenly, somebody will peep into your cabin. Okay. You have to encourage, you have to entertain. Okay. And what to prioritize, what to not to prioritize. These are all the practical issues that will come up. And uh, some of the way I have mentioned it here, there could be many more ways, okay? Empower them, empower the people, okay? Delegate the responsibilities. And then you be available for the people to address, okay, their personal, professional concerns. And uh, we need to find out ways to be creative. Uh, I have seen many times, okay, the, these leaders, uh, if it goes to a, they go for a lunch, every day lunch, they will invite uh, 
one group of people to have lunch along with them. Okay, it's not the same close knit group every day they go as a gang. Okay, so like that. Okay, if it is a birthday or any function, take time to visit them, invite them. Okay, so we have to be creative if we want to be a people centric, transformational, and a servant leader. And it is not just a lip service. You have to model it in your life. Okay, and uh, you should be willing to mentor as a group, as an individual, okay, as a whole society by living it. And then you, your family, your organization should be very hospitable. I just pause here. Any of you have uh, any uh, questions, comments on the first attribute? Uh, we can have a brief discussion. If you don't disagree also, uh, you can speak and we can discuss about it on the first attribute. Anyone? Yeah. Yeah, seen awesome, sir. Uh, yes, yeah. Ramana. So uh, in my experience, I have seen some open offices where the boss will not sit in a cabin. He'll also be sitting along with his co-workers and we can uh, reach him for a, at any time and uh, discuss uh, uh, so that barrier will be removed. He's sitting in some cabin. I need to go through that uh, secretary, find his time. All those things have been removed. Mm -hmm. So that is one thing. And in my in one of my customer places, I have seen that uh, the director of that organization um, used to have a, a meeting with all his functional heads daily or a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. he used to call everyone and discuss the... Um, it could be anything, the official matters or personal matters. So that is one of the uh, trait which I've seen in one of the leaders in one of the customer organizations. Thank you. Thank you, Ramana. Yeah. So this is something in today's world, uh, they don't have, I, I mean, compared to earlier organizations in terms of layout and today's organization, uh, they don't even see a uh, share glasses. Okay. Meaning... A partition walls and other things it becomes a complete open office system. Okay, I want every one of you to pitch in at least in one area. We are going to talk about eight attributes. Uh, I'll keep moving. Uh, the second one is uh, affability. Uh, you will see that uh, it's close to the previous one, but it is different. Okay, so you may be available, but uh, how will your, your ability to get along with the people? Okay, that talks about uh, affability and uh, it has a lot to do, okay, the way you interact with the people, okay, what kind of atmosphere that you create at home, uh, within your friend circle, in your office, uh, all those things. Okay, that is very important. Uh, many, many managers, uh, they do a lot of lip service. The moment you go and uh, try to uh, figure out, you will see a lot of obstacles. Okay, uh, because the various reasons, okay, getting along with the people, okay, may not be good. And that again, okay, can be cultivated. You may be available, but how well you are able to seamlessly interact with the people, okay? So I just put uh, a few ways to do that. Uh, one is the listening, okay? Now, this is one, one thing which suffers a lot after the invasion of uh, mobile phones and other things. You go and sit before him and before you, he looks at flip the paper, go through the mobile, text something, answer some calls, Okay, continually getting distracted. Okay, so your accessibility is there, but affability is not there. Okay, he's unable to listen to you, align with you, and you will get frustrated. You would have, at some point of time, you realize that, oh, I have come to him. Okay, so that is one part of it. And uh, such leaders uh, believe in teamwork. Okay, including his own tasks, he invites people to contribute, okay, suggestions, uh, take suggestions, incorporate it, uh, all those things. And duly, 
acknowledge and affirm the contribution of others okay now all those things basically create a kind of bonding with the leader okay see at the end of the day you will see that hey the finally i just made a presentation but everything in it has been given by you guys okay this is how they affirm the team members and others uh, everyone okay so that is the next thing okay so leaders continually find ways to say to the team okay through modeling through word through deed everything saying that i am he hearing you i hear you okay In many ways not it could be directly it could be indirectly through multiple channels you need to create that impression okay your voice is being heard at the top okay now when that feeling comes to the people in the shop floor okay when you go and ask them something they will say here i am okay so when it, when they have that impression of i hear you and uh, they say that here i am that's the the emotional bonding that sets between the leader and the follower and uh, they start sharing hey this is my vision about the organization these are the goals that we should set forth everyone contribute to the vision mission goals and objectives of the company okay that's the uh, beautiful setting which demonstrate leader as the affable person any comments on this part affability as i told you i am just uh, putting the principle okay you can share your experience uh, your own experience okay how you have been okay a person of this nature and that will be an inspiration for others uh, i want at least one comment for each slide so uh, i remember uh, mr bala uh, i don't know if it will come under availability or affability but uh, any time we are in the meeting or we we were having some tender work or there were some deadlines but still if somebody comes to his room he would put all those things aside and be talk to them finish that discussion with them and then get back to that important work but he was always uh, available and listen to them understand them discuss with them whatever their concerns were okay okay thank you and i have seen people remembering uh, tens and hundreds of birthdays anniversaries and other things okay that's a very uh, small uh, way of uh, affirming others okay and uh, when they see it hey your birthday is coming up uh, next month the 10th no so immediately you see that uh, happiness in the other space okay they affirm others and listen well and acknowledge uh, the importance of uh, getting along with the people no matter who they are okay i saw you there how is your son you were he was uh, okay suffering with some problem that time how is it he now so these are all the ways uh, okay truly that comes from the heart uh, that reflects uh, the affability yeah i remember with this uh, mr jamil also he used to remember the birthdays and exactly like you said how are your children what is happening how are they studying what are they doing so all those questions he used to ask and uh, we used to feel very happy that he remembers our children he knows them by name and all this okay okay so some of yeah. <laughs> yeah somebody else is trying to speak i'm sorry yeah so let's go on to the next one uh, the third one is very difficult one uh, is called vulnerability okay so vulnerability is leading from the position of one's weakness okay believing everyone tend to make uh, mistakes uh, not everyone are great uh, strong in all the areas so they believe that uh, growth and maturity takes lifetime to achieve 
Okay. Now, this is something which we don't see in a world view. People tend to hide their vulnerable uh, areas and then position their uh, strengths. Okay. Because they feel that uh, then only they'll be able to achieve, people will have belief, people will listen, obey, and things will move on. Okay. They don't want to expose their uh, uh, weaknesses. So it's very important uh, okay, uh, to kind of uh, be open about uh, one's own weaknesses and about the criticism by others. Okay, some people will compliment, some people may uh, kind of uh, give a negative, doesn't matter. Okay, because uh, that is the reality. There is nothing to put a face mask or something like that. Trusting others to lead in your absence. Okay, not necessarily physical absence, but even in an area you feel you are not so good at it, ask them to take lead in that area saying, hey, you are good at it. Why didn't you take lead in this? Okay. So they have that uh, uh, kind of a confidence in doing that. And then uh, they very boldly, openly build their successors. Okay. When they are very active, many, many years to go, but still they build a successor. And uh, accepting the burden of higher expectations placed on you. Okay, quite often we shy away taking up uh, some kind of overarching responsibilities because there is a fear of failure. Okay, but if you know that even if I fail, it doesn't matter. Okay, uh, the team understands, the, the team accepts. And you will see that the team come forward supporting and making it as a successful okay, the endeavor what they are taking. So they accept the burden of higher expectation and uh, even willing to be exposed if it is a failure. And uh, such people allow co-workers the freedom to make mistakes, okay? So now the, the, the fifth attribute you see here, to, now today being uh, well spoken about in agile methodologies, affordable mistakes you allow them to make. Okay, because every mistake uh, leads to your learning. And the only thing sometimes they say that don't make the same mistake twice. Okay, once it is okay, but learn and then make it better. Okay, so I thought uh, uh, I'll take some very new examples. And uh, you see here uh, very recently, okay, the Zoom CEO. Okay, initially there was a, a kind of a vulnerability in terms of uh, security and uh, he apologized to the people about it and said uh, we will work on it and fix it okay the same is the case with uh, facebook uh, uh, when he has to face the u.s senate he admitted yeah it was not our intention but uh, these things are being used to harm i'm sorry about it okay and uh, yeah, so this happens uh, in many ways. And at the end, you don't see that such leaders become truly weak. Okay, by accepting their vulnerability, they're actually becoming more stronger by themselves, as well as collectively as an organization becomes uh, very stronger. I have, I think uh, many of you will have more examples on it. Uh, if you are uh, prompted to give an example, uh, please feel free, anyone. Sir, uh, this recall of the motor cars, we have seen, they have identified certain deficiencies in the functioning and they recalled all the motor all the motor cars and they rectified it and uh, addressed the issues, whatever they, before they are blown up out of proportion. That is one of the things we have seen recently. And uh, coming to Indian example, I think uh, the Infosys uh, CEO was called for the IT uh, application, income tax uh, application, whatever they have made. And th there are so many issues in the portal, uh, which are developed by Infosys. And he had to face the uh, finance ministry and explain things. And he, he accepted the uh, the deficiencies, whatever they uh, pointed out. And he allowed them to make the corrections. 
so these are the two examples what you have seen and one more thing was about the the great thing ad admission by the volkswagen in uh, germany if you remember they said that they have uh, manipulated the emission uh, and this thing uh, emission uh, carbon uh, i think and it was uh, manipulated and they accepted gracefully and said that it was a mistake they have done and uh, they have corrected that also this is a uh, these are uh, example and this one of the important attribute i guess uh, many of us should uh, model it and i see uh, sudhir charles uh, in our uh, group thank you sudhir for joining uh, maybe uh, can you explain uh, uh, the vulnerability in abraham lincoln's life which normally you people discuss in lead lectures uh it, that's that's quite a long story essentially you caught me on you put me on the spot brother sinvasan <laughs> okay uh okay the story goes that abraham lincoln was asked by one of his generals for leave the following day and they were in the thick of war actually so all the troops were in the front lines and a lot of people were dying and lots of things were happening and one of the generals walks up to abram lincoln and asks for leave because his wife died and uh, abram lincoln uh, just blows up and says what on earth are you asking so many people are dying your wife is uh, of course dead i understand but then you should understand that there's so much a burden on me and uh, how can you put me through some much more pressure can't you understand what i'm going through and all the rest of it and then he says i'm i'm dismissing you right now meaning go back go back to your uh, wherever you belong to your quarters and stay there i i can't handle all this pressure so which was very uncharacteristic of <clears throat> abram lincoln but then uh, uh, the, the the night passes and then early in the morning uh, there's a knock on this particular general's door and there's a president with all his uh, you know with all his with his car and everything apologizing profusely to the general saying that i'm extremely sorry i was a brute last night i i said and did things which i should not have had you know once when your partner passes away uh, you know it's such a painful thing and i i did not exactly look at it from your point of view i'm very sorry and he he picks up the general and all his stuff you know carries him in his own uh, president's car all the way till where the ship that was supposed to take the general to his home uh, was actually waiting so through the night abraham lincoln regretted what he had done and he actually as a president of the country he 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 changed he mean he understood what a mistake he had made and so in the morning he try he rectifies it openly thank you thank you sudhir no it's a very profound example okay we see in a us president's life and how personally he go and apologizes and then uh, uh, gives the the proper response to what he has done to the person okay good let's uh, keep going uh, the next thing is uh, vitality so the vitality i mean as the word goes uh, okay this is something vibrant uh, active physically mentally emotionally okay so they they give importance to that day by day moment by moment okay they live every day as a kind of a gift from god okay in taking care of themselves taking care of others uh, how is it possible in a leader's life okay it's very very uh, difficult thing uh so it's very very important uh, one if you study many of such people okay servant leaders they don't they just don't rely on their own source of uh, supply in terms of knowledge or intelligence or energy or anything okay they typically believe that uh, okay the the real source of me comes from someone higher than i okay so i have a responsibility to use those faculties okay for the advancement of a nation or organization or family okay 
and we are created for eternity okay so that is the mindset so they pay attention for every minute thing in their life whether it is they are taking care of their own uh, well being and uh, using the knowledge for the betterment of others companies etc okay so if you look at their own life pattern they wait on god daily okay for that days okay source of energy wisdom etc they read extensively i am very poor at it i read okay they they try to spend time alone okay with an introspection attitude and then uh, they give time for their physical well being in terms of exercising walking etc and they give importance to the family okay in terms of resting and uh, being with the family during weekends now such people you see that they are unshakable okay whether ups and downs uh, uh, disappointments depressions or uh, happiness you see that uh, they are unshakable okay so this is one of the important aspect uh, we see many times people uh, lose balance in their life okay recently we have seen a very uh, top notch uh, richest person uh, okay losing very early or at least uh, okay late 40s and early 50s i guess and uh, not really paying attention to his uh, physical well being okay so that is the aspect of it uh, uh, always even say that i am not what i am i belong to somebody okay the somebody could be many okay as a family now uh, i have to be faithful to my wife and uh, i have to be as a father i need to be okay available uh, and uh, useful to my children i have to model it so like that uh, uh, they play their role of vitality for everyone around the people and believe that their source of strength and energy and wisdom come from above okay so that is the characteristic okay vitality and uh, yeah anyone would like to uh, comment or remark on it we don't read extensively in marketplace books okay these kind of attributes uh, they little shy away in discussing this piece of information but if you personally introspect it uh, you can understand its value no matter who you are okay it's very very important and uh, if you start practicing you will see the value okay you don't need to wait for years okay in days and weeks you can find uh, the outcome of it uh, practicing such values okay so let me go to the next one uh vitality and then the next one is uh, teachability now again you will see there is a kind of similarity before that also i said they read widely uh, they exercise uh, uh, they do all that but again teachability also okay may resemble the same but they are very very different okay the teachability talks about uh, our attitude okay so the attitude is uh, it is a, there is something to learn in everything okay am i uh, listening to it okay am i understanding it so that needs a uh, uh, lot of humility okay the teachable spirit they will say okay do you have that teachable spirit always to learn something new now it is not the knowledge if you start focusing on the knowledge that's it you will become a a madman because so much of knowledge is available in today's world okay so it talks about uh, uh, that internalized application oriented we can call it as a discernment or wisdom okay so this is something you you start watching everything okay if uh, as you go on uh, you see the flowers you see the trees you see some of the insects you see animals you see fruits you see flowers in everything you look at it hey how beautiful it is okay can we make this one of these 
Okay, so what is that uh, God is teaching you? Okay, through that. So that is the teachable spirit. Okay, so when you have the teachable spirit, you basically again looks at yourself and you see that you are lacking in many, many areas. So that leads to, okay, self-examination and uh, self-examination motivates you to become better and better. Okay, so you, you engage in active conversations, even if it is contrasting to your views, you do that. Okay, so you see that you are learning. So it's again, as much as we saw vulnerability as an important trait, okay, the teachable spirit is a very important trait in the lives of uh, 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 servant leaders. Now, there are a few blockers. Okay, I thought it is good to uh, look at uh, what are the blockers that prevent us from a self-examination and the aspect of teachability. Uh, you will see that I, as I try to explain each of them, try introspecting yourself, okay? Uh, I, have, I have, your own heart will deceive you, okay? I just quoted one verse from Bible. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond your, who can understand it, okay? Now, what are those traps that can deceive you? The first thing is called anchoring trap. Now, what is this anchoring trap? When you are, uh, discussing about something, your first impression will try to dominate and you give all arguments and other things to make sure that uh, you uh, a kind of uh, make a decision on your first impression. Okay, that is called an anchoring trap. It will block you listening other perspectives from other people or your own thoughts what comes subsequently. You will debate and then try to settle on your first impression. That is called anchoring trap. The information, your mind or your heart that receives it the first. And then uh, there is something called the sunk cost trap. Okay, it looks uh, your past. Okay, what you have done in the past, what has worked, what has not worked. Based on that, you try to hold on to it. Okay, you don't want to change yourself. Okay, so that is called the sunk cost trap. Okay, you try to overcome by consulting, getting different views, okay, and then try to experiment something which you are never invested, okay, not just going by the past experience. And the third thing, confirming evidence trap, it says that uh, you look at, uh, okay, uh, something like uh, what you have in your mind, you look for others to confirm, okay? Some four people are giving their opinion. Now, what you think and what some other person thinks aligning, and you feel that that is the right thing. So that means you keep yourself as a benchmark. You are not open for contrasting views. So that is called a confirming evidence trap. Then status quo trap, okay? So it is something like, uh, uh, you try to maintain the status quo when there are multiple opinions coming up. The more opinion comes up, you will tend to go more towards the status quo. There are many people who do that, which may not be a good option, but he's not able to decide on, so simply he wants to go on status quo. And the last one is the framing trap, where okay, you frame your questions ask the people to align your perspective, okay? So this, many times we do that in our professional life. Now, all these things are the traps trying to bias your thoughts and all. So when you do a self-examination, we should be careful not to get, uh, okay, into these things. We always should have a something like, uh, Okay, put a placard on your neck saying that I am a WIP, not a VIP. Okay, I'm always work in progress in the hands of God. Okay, I'm willing to learn. Okay, so that will basically help because we see many people enduring as a leader for decades, but uh, suddenly they fall. Okay, because of the character flaws. 
I mean, we can look at it. Some of the tennis stars, I think Boris Becker or someone, okay, got into some uh, problem. And I mean, we don't want to name it, but uh, we could see many people years together they endure, but uh, they do because they are not uh, teachable, they are not humble, they are not open. They fall into some of the traps. Yeah. Any any uh, reflections? So it is important to have that uh, mind frame saying that I'm yet to achieve the perfection. I'm not perfect at this point of time. I'm yet to do more to achieve the perfection in the uh, God's view or something like that. that yeah, exactly. Be... Yeah, It is a lifelong journey yes, and sir. we should be willing to listen from our children, our friends, our spouse, our subordinates. Uh, that is the teachable spirit. Uh, without uh, really okay, give, yielding to any of these biases. Okay, uh, let's move on. I think uh, uh, the time is also clocking. Uh, so this is the uh, examples, I'll skip them. Uh, let's move on to the impartiality. It is the leader's willingness to forego the privileges of power. Okay. Now, this is very obvious. As you grow up in the ladder, in the organization, a lot of perks, a lot of legitimate power Okay, that will come to you, separate cabin, wash car, and uh, exclusivity in various areas. Uh, now, how much you are willing to forego? Okay in order to address many things that uh, we have seen before and that we are going to see after. So if you want to identify yourself with followers, sometimes you need to forego the power. Okay, probably you ask your, uh, okay, the posh, uh, the car to follow, and then you get into a, an ordinary car with your fellow worker, uh, officer, and use those one hour to listen from him, talking to him, discussing. Okay, so identify as you walk along, okay, with the poor and uh, willing to submit the leadership above and the leadership at the peer level. Okay, don't hold on to your power and then say that, yeah, I will not do that, this, that, and all. Okay, I want to be different, but uh, I'll be equal with you, no matter what layer or someone. Okay, so this is something impartiality. Okay, you don't uh, try to differentiate yourself as an exclusive person, but make yourself as an inclusive person. All don't consider yourself as an elite, but uh, demonstrate that you are exemplary in many areas, especially in the areas of uh, the character. Okay, the mark of characters. So there is something like uh, someone says that I do this, I do this uh, as a servant leader. And when they come out of the stage, if someone asks you, okay, uh, why don't you just do that? Then you will see that immediately a caustic reaction from such people. Okay, they, they want to be a servant leader, but they don't want to be a servant. Okay, so you will see them in their life modeling in their actions. Okay, now this doesn't come unless you practice it as an inside-out attitude. Okay, impartiality, uh, which we could see in many cases in institutional level. You will see, for example, there's a place everyone have to stand on the queue. You have to wash your own plates, okay, before dinner and after dinner. And uh, these are some of the practices, okay, not just as a ritual, but we need to do it willingly, happily, okay, by doing it. So you can stop me as I go through, uh, if you have, okay, anything to share. So the next aspect, in fact, it was not there in the book, uh, I added it. It's very important from a leader's perspective to be generous, okay? Now, uh, India is considered to be very poor in generosity. Okay, I think it is uh, 
uh, we are listed in if you identify top uh, 150 nations we are somewhere beyond 120 okay in terms of generosity uh, it is because of the attitude okay so the attitude is uh, i earned it it is mine okay so i i worked very hard i achieved it now this is something which uh, we basically imbibe from our childhood onwards because of the very competitive environment and other things okay so a lot of false teaching from parents from teachers from schools and all okay you you have to be on your own okay so that makes us to be more possessive of our roles, responsibilities, salaries, powers, perks, okay, you, and uh, very little in terms of giving. And when it comes to giving, we see that if I if I give some big money, uh, I have been considered as a great philanthropist. Okay, so giving away money is very easy. Okay, so I just listed a few areas of giving. Okay, the First is demonstrating yourself as a, a good steward. Okay, for that, we need to understand nothing belongs to us in this world. We don't have a control over our birth, we don't have any control over death, and uh, anything that you uh, possess or earn, maybe millions and billions, it may not go beyond the third or fourth generation. Okay, so nothing is ours. So there is a verse in Bible saying, God says the world is mine and all its fullness. Okay, when you say fullness, it's it's rich in every area. Okay, the uh, human being, the other creation. Okay, so the whole universe is so rich, but everything belongs to God. So we are called to be faithful stewards. So we need to be generous in every area, okay, in terms of relationships, uh, in terms of natural resources, in terms of the uh, profession that you are in, the people. So everywhere we need to be very generous in a demonstrated stewardship and generous in forgiving. Very, very tough, but it is very important, okay, for a servant leader. Generous in healing. You don't need to be a a doctor to heal others, okay? If you give a, a willing heart and uh, ears to others' concerns, okay, 60, 70, 80% of their emotional, mental stress will be relieved. When that gets relieved, physical healing will come automatically. In fact, they will accept, okay, what they are in. Okay, so be generous in giving your time and... Uh, Okay, the heart to others. Generous in our workplace. Always try to walk an extra mile. Okay, to customer, to your boss, to your subordinates. Okay, we need to be generous in our workplace, sharing our time, sharing our talent, expertise, all those things. And uh, in fact, last but not least, in giving in terms of money, your time, your talents, etc., to the people who are in need, okay, outside the workplace, outside the family. Now, this makes, okay, a person truly a servant leader, okay? And you'll see in terms of, okay, power, popularity, all those things are byproducts. It will come, okay? The moment you do all those things, it comes. But our heart will not be set on those things. We will continue to be serving others. Any reflections? I think we have come to almost seventh. Uh, just one more is there. Uh, so we'll try to be on time to close it. Sir, Anyone looking, at, spoken? looking at the current uh, great uh, resignation thing going on in the IT industry, uh, this particular point, if the managers are really so generous, spend time to understand, listen to what their team members want to say, etc. It could be a great solution uh, to stop the resignations. 
just my thoughts very very true ramkrishna very very true okay so it's like more of a, a rat race okay is what going on <laughs> uh, and uh, one one key thing is sir we need to have a, a perspective that we are only a caretakers or trustees of the nature whatever is uh, is giving us so we are not here to we are here to nourish it or uh, this thing but not to destroy this uh, the benefits given by the nature to others we are here to enhance the benefits or uh, at least we nurture the same thing and pass it on to the coming Next generation yeah yeah yes, that's right beautiful that is the generous in terms of stewardship stewardship and yes. uh, it is so very important uh, and today it is lacking we are very indiscriminate in terms of uh, using plastics or uh, yes yes uh, other things uh, okay and even people we take people for granted yes and, uh, yeah by virtue of your uh, uh, earning power or something you can buy food but you are not uh, supposed to waste the food mm. you are supposed to consume the food and not to waste it so that uh, the food can be consumed by others it is not our uh, enhanced to uh, what do you call misuse the benefits whatever you are having or the privileges what we are having that's right yeah okay we'll just look at the last one and then maybe some common discussion uh, because i like this uh, very much uh, stickability okay as we discussed in the previous one and today in terms of this uh, moonlighting and uh, resignations attritions and uh, uh, the loyalty comes into a big threat uh, so we see this uh, the stickability is uh, reducing like anything okay so it's very very important uh, for us to remember okay this attribute of uh, finishing well okay uh, when i say finishing well and stickability it doesn't mean okay we need to serve a company from a graduate engineer trainee to till resignation okay that is not the uh, answer i am straight away giving uh, but in terms of uh, how committed you are for the work interested to us okay at any level okay am i uh, staying back or am i committed till it is finished whether it is success or failure that is different but uh, am i truly okay committed to it in the midst of uh, uh, the storms and uh, other uh, disturbances okay so this is very well uh, uh, kind of missing today and uh, for which i also put down another point before okay my source of energy is not me okay something beyond me from where i derive okay my wisdom my energy my sustenance my very breath is not belong to me okay god's provide it so when i work hard at the end the, the ultimate reward is from god okay so that attitude is basically will help us to okay finish well okay anything that is given to us this is a big topic by itself there is a, a book written on finishing well okay we can keep speaking a lot on this topic but we need to remember uh, i as i told you before we have no control in our birth and death but we are here okay so and uh, though there are global life expectancy is around 70 years but we do not know whether we will see tomorrow morning okay so when our life is so a kind of a uncertain end this finishing well is very very important okay we should look at it uh, our life is a book and uh, every section or chapter okay is a phase in our life so if mm. we want to finish the life well mm. we should have that uh, end in mind and you need to work towards the end and if that end comes any time am i prepared for it how well i am going to finish that so that boils down to every mm. chapter should be finished well okay otherwise book cannot be finished well so the chapter for example currently we are in a phase of life how am i doing okay if i can't do this well 
I can't begin my next phase well. Okay, life will be very short ended. Okay, it's all that we have seen before: vitality, teachability. Okay, so in every aspect, how am I doing? Okay, is it pleasing for the people around me? Is it pleasing for the Creator? Okay, it is pleasing for in my own eyesight. Okay, how is it? So that is uh, very very important, uh, which actually okay differentiates uh, a servant mm -hmm. leader a lot. Okay, uh, I mean I I heard about uh, things very well. Uh, for think about uh, each of you, your own mother. And you are running, uh, uh, let's say you are climbing Everest, and you are running a uh, uh, Olympic. Okay, so if you are climbing an Everest, every the whole world will be watching. Okay, what is the highest altitude you are going to achieve? But uh, your mother will be thinking, oh, my son has gone so long; he should come back safely. He should come back safely, so that will be the heartbeat of uh, our mother for everyone of us. Okay, so climbing up is easy, but uh, finishing it well, getting back, okay, is very very important. So that is the thing. I've just put a couple of uh, quotes here. A vision without uh, discipline is a daydream, and uh, Thomas Alva Edition. Okay, a great inventor, scientist, puts it this: one percent is inspiration, and the balance ninety-nine percent is perspiration. You have to sweat it, you have to endure it, you have to persevere it. Okay, so that is where we see the ultimate success. So we will come across a lot of storms, and our source of strength is from elsewhere. Okay, but as we live, we will live. A life of uh, vitality and many other attributes. Okay, let's. Uh, yeah, I just put one small story here again. Uh, I'll read it for the benefit of everyone. An athlete by name John Stephen Aquari of Tanzania, who represented in 1968 Olympics marathon, 21 kilometers. Okay, in the final, he fell hard and injured both his ankle. And his knee. He was uh, attended medically, and uh, leg was wrapped in bandage. Continued bleeding, but still he continued to continued his race, limping. And uh, he entered the stadium much after the winner finished the race. And people applauded. And a reporter asked him, hey, "Why did you take this much pain?" You know very well you are not even going to be there in top hundred or so. Okay, whatever number qualified for that. Okay, he said, my country. Okay, sent from thousands of miles, seven thousand miles, not just to begin the race. They sent me to finish the race. So whether I won or win or not, uh, it is my duty to finish it well. Okay. So that's the attitude of uh, people, okay, uh, who serve others, not to be served. Stickability. Now there could be many more. Okay, given the time, I thought uh, these are some of the attributes uh, not so widely discussed in corporate uh, boardrooms and uh, other workshops and seminars, but I felt uh, you should know. And uh, I'm not sure. I, in fact, I thought of uh, building a small questionnaire for, for your own assessment. Uh, where do you stand against these uh, qualifiers or attributes? Uh, if time permits, I'll try to uh, do one and then send it to you all. Uh, so you can, you can put yourself against it, each of it, and then measure yourself. And you can do well. Okay. Uh, any Closing comments and remarks. These are the eight attributes. Just to sum it up: accessibility, affability, vulnerability, vitality, teachability, impartiality, generosity, and stickability. 
sir you have put them as a process flow does it means the, no, these no, rights no. will be available in a sequential manner or what <laughs> no no <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so coming to that uh, stickability point, uh, the uh-huh. perseverance is more important. Perseverance and patience is more important, which we have seen in the inventors. Uh, Correct. Uh, recently, Correct. recently I had an experience of uh, listening to this Nikola Tesla, who invented this alternating current in the 18th uh, 18th centuries. So his theory was not accepted by everyone, but he still uh, had that perseverance to demonstrate. and it was demonstrated well in the niagara falls where that using that uh, uh, potential energy of the water mm-hmm. he has simulated that and generated started generating the electricity alternating current electricity and uh, with his perseverance and uh, patience and whatever the hurdles put, were put across to him because in the in those days they were satisfied that only di- direct current was the only solution they were they, they were thinking like that but he this gentleman went there and said there are better ways of doing this and he was more interested to see how do we transport the electricity from one point to the other mm-hmm. so this mm-hmm. direct current was somewhat a static thing just a source was a static thing and there was no trans- transportability of the electricity but he is this gentleman had that perseverance and vision to see that this could happen and has invented so many uh, machines based on that alternating current mm-hmm. during covid days uh, there was a very a beautiful story by one of the scientist okay uh, who started a research about two decades back okay on this uh, uh, vaccine related molecule i guess and uh, she was uh, shown door by many laboratories and industrialist for a long time but she never gave up okay in one of the conference uh, one a kind of uh, ceo uh, traced that uh, i mean understood acknowledged that potential and uh, he gave opportunity to continue her research and uh, when the covid came actually that became okay the the base for those uh, i think uh, pfizer and uh, johnson and johnson okay their vaccines okay and uh, she became kind of very popular and even now uh, she was recommended for nobel prize and on but she started her work uh, in 90s okay around that okay so that endurance in the midst of uh, uh, so many disappointments and uh, refusals uh, is very very important when you have that uh, mission mode focus uh, to finish well any of you if you know the name and the details maybe you can explain it but uh, i heard it i forgot the specificity of that uh, invention all right uh, uh, thank you very much uh, for your patient listening and contribution and uh, discussions and uh, i will now pass it on to uh, lakshmi shivani uh, kindly leave your uh, uh, feedback uh, about yes, this seminar yes i have uh, given the feedback uh, link uh, in the chat yeah so that's available uh, yes sir. in the chat please uh, click the link uh, share your feedback uh, and we will continue with uh, the uh, this series uh so please keep yourself uh, enrolled if you want to participate in this uh, webinars uh, regularly it is not very frequent once in a fortnight one hour i guess it is always uh, possible as you fill this uh, uh, feedback if you have any one uh, any of you have any point for discussion or uh, remarks you can express it and uh, if you have completed the feedback uh, uh, you can log out okay thank you so much for joining and uh, have a good evening good weekend thank you tesh thank you so much for joining from
sir thank you so much sir actually i joined late a little bit mm-hmm. i have okay. some office work so i couldn't join on time sir so i joined around 7 o'clock all right, <laughs> right. Okay. yes sir nice nice to have the session sir it is very insightful session okay.